I'd always been in love with Alpines. Um, the first one I saw was in 1968 at the Nürburgring, and then the um, following year at Le Mans. Um, and so, uh, and Le Mans in 1970, again in the street, lots of beautiful Berlinettes. I thought, I want one of those. Um, but it never happened. <laughs> it never does happen, does it? So uh, it had to wait a while. And then fortunately, one day I was working for a company who hadn't paid me any commission, and the guy said, well, okay, we owe you something. And um, they gave me an Alpine, an A310, which was the, the coupe version in the 80s. And so the, the love of Alpines really started at, uh, at around about that time. So that's the back end of the 1980s. And then into um, uh, the 90s, uh, both I, I, I went sprinting, racing, uh, some of the stuff with single-seater and saloon cars and, and an Alpine. And then I thought, hang on, do a bit of writing maybe. So I started to uh, go back to doing what I was doing before. Again, mostly just for the club magazines. And then about three or four years ago, uh, we started to get interested in what we might be able to do um, for proper magazines, as it were, um, and maybe even write a book or two. I retired, had plenty of time, and thought now's the chance to have a go. And the first result of our work is what you have here. Um, and the next one, two are coming out next March. Okay, well the first one was about the Formula One development of the turbo engine. Um, Alpine were involved in the first Formula turbo, uh, turbo Formula One car from the point of view of the chassis. And the engine was created by Gordini. And uh, the old Gordini had moved into a new building, Sever Paris, and it was all now modern and things had moved forward. The V6 engine that was being used in the sports car books uh, was made into the Formula One turbo engine, 1500cc, and that subsequently went on to be the first turbo car to win the Grand Prix. And that's what the first book is about, the development of those cars and that engine specifically. The next two books are about these sports prototype racing cars of LP, uh, and they go from 1963 to 1969 in the first period and then from 1973 to 1978 in the second period. There are two periods because um, uh, when Jean Redelais, the father of Alpine, wanted to go to Le Mans, he had a passion for Le Mans, he um, had a sports prototype made, a special one, in 1963, and that was to lead on to many, many more that are all described in the book in the first section. And it's all about sports prototypes. We cover every race, uh, nearly every driver, certainly every chassis, um, right through to 1969, and that includes the development of Gordini engines um, and the fateful V8 Gordini engine, which unfortunately didn't work very well, and Renault, who by then had got a lot of money involved, decided to cut it, and that was in 1969, after uh, a debacle at Le Mans, and uh, all sports car prototype racing for Alpine stopped, they were not allowed to make any more. But they didn't stand still. Obviously, within behind the scenes, their minds were ticking over. And so the second period, which is the subject of the second volume, um, starts in 1973 with the development and the request for a new engine, um, requested by Elf, actually, the oil company, because they wanted to move into things after their efforts with Matra. And uh, they then went on to finance the new engine, which led to a new era of uh, sports prototype racing. Uh, they won the European Championship, this is Alpine with a, a Renault Gordini V6, and then subsequently the Le Mans 24 Hours in 1978. And that was their target. Once they'd reached that target, they stopped and continued with Grand Prix Formula One racing. I owe a great deal of, to, of thanks to a lot, a lot of people. Uh, we go back, obviously when we started this, this project, the idea was about four years ago. We actually started research three years ago. Um, after a year, we were able to produce the first book, which was the, the one about the Formula One book, which also had a lot of crossovers into the sports prototype of the second era, because that's obviously the same team of guys that were working on these engines. Um, for the interviews for, for this book, and one of my styles, I don't know if you call it a style if you like, is that I like to go and see the people and talk to them who were there, rather than just pick up the history and read it. The interview is everything because you get so much coming out of it. So there are a lot of people from Alpine, from for the, the sports car books,
from the period 63 to 69. A lot of these guys are, are um, in their 70s and 80s now. Wonderful people. And I can tell you some terrific stories of going and seeing them. They invite you into their lounge. You sit down and have a coffee. And they're talking about an era when they, they were driving on tyres you wouldn't even put on your wheelbarrow, you know, and where they just sort of they get told, OK, we're ready, take a puff of his cigarette, stub it out on the floor, and off he'd go. And as I said in the, in the beginning of the, of the book, in the introduction, he wouldn't know whether the, the car was going to kill him or whether the cigarette would, because times were different then. And these cars were lethal. It was a time when a lot of men died. Um, so they were able to talk about that to me, and I owe, owe a great deal to all of the men at um, Associations des Anciennes Alpines in Dieppe, who in fact have told me virtually all of their uh, histories and how they worked on the cars, the mechanics, the engineers, and there's been help from many French um, collectors of, I suppose it's, I don't want to say ephemera, but it's all stuff that you, you, you all the race reports, all the fine details that one wouldn't normally think of collecting. They've got programs, they've got the race reports of things. There's one or two in the UK too. Uh, a guy called John Sanson, he's got the whole uh, Le Mans stuff that he's lent me, all his programs. So I've been able to, to step back in time into the 60s and into the 70s and see for real exactly what it was, not speculation. Um, and there is a tremendous amount of people who think, I, I hate to think how many we've interviewed, maybe 30, 40 guys. Um, in the sports car books we've got uh, forwards by uh, uh, Jacques Chenise who was the number two to Jean Redelais, the, the founder of Alpine. He eventually went on to be a, um, a new products director in Renault. Uh, a very serious guy, very high um, standing in the sport. Jean Vinatier who was one of the great drivers for Alpine and many other cars as well. and He's with the FIA now. And also the designer of all of these cars, Richard Boulot. Um, he helped me both with the Formula One book because he was involved in the, uh, the very first um, single-seater cars for Alpine and with the first sports prototype cars. Um, so those are from, from that period. From the second period, I've already mentioned Gerard LaRousse and Derek Bell. Um, on top of that, there's Francois Castagne, who is the, he's the ex-vice president of Chrysler. He was the production uh, director, technical director of Renault Sport during the period. Um, there is Francois Xavier de Foss who was on all the tests. His job was to make it happen. That was his instructions. His, he, he had to make the tests work and win them all. It was as simple as that. Um, and so we, we've, we've got a, an input from most of the key personnel and a big thank you to all of the others that have helped. Uh, and not the least, a, a big thank you to Helen, the name you'll see at the, the front of the book there, who did all the translations for the French fantastic amount of work. I can't rephrase that well. And believe me, my spelling and grammar is terrific. So uh, she's able to smooth out all of that so you don't see it.